Did you know that the Quran contains a number of historical errors and mistakes? Hold on, I get it. No one likes their beliefs to be challenged. So if you are Muslim who could be offended by this video, I recommend you stop watching right now. My aim is not to make you feel bad or attacked. My aim is to promote reason and critical thinking. So if you are open for some logical questioning and healthy skepticism, then keep watching. When you hold a strong belief, especially a religious belief, it is very normal to have cognitive biases. This is why Muslims, as they read the Quran, will always find scientific miracles all over its pages, while constantly missing clear historical errors and turning blind eye to a lot of scientific mistakes on the very same pages. Today, I'd like to point out just a couple of those historical errors found all over the Quran. But before I do so, if you like the content I create on my channel, please hit subscribe right now. If you appreciate my work and want me to produce more videos like this, please consider supporting my channel on Patreon to stop dogma and promote reason. So what are the historical errors in the Quran? Let me show you a few. When we read Surah Taha, Surah number 20, verse 83 to 88, we find it telling the story of Moses when he left the Israelites for 40 days. Then when he came back, he found them worshipping an idol of a calf. The Quran tells us who led the Israelite astray in verse 85 and again in verse 87. Adallahum as samari And the Samari has led them astray. Now, it is important to know that al samari which translates as the Samari, is not a name of a person. It is an adjectival use that means of or relating to Samaria, a central region of ancient Palestine. It is like my name, Adam al-Masri. Al-Masri literally means the Egyptian. Or al-Bukhari, the Muslim scholar. The Bukhari literally means he who came from Bukhara, a city of Uzbekistan. Similarly, al-Samari, the Samari, means he who came from the city of Samaria. The Samari led the Israelite astray. This doesn't come as a surprise at all. We know that for many centuries before Islam, there have always been conflicts between Jews and Samaritans. These conflicts and hatred between Jews and Samaritans go back in time even before the time of Jesus. So it is no wonder when the Quran wanted to paint a villain in the story to have used the Samari as the evil man who led the Israelite astray. Problem is, the Samaritans and the city of Samaria never existed at the time of Moses. It wasn't even established yet. The story of Moses goes back to around 1400 BC. However, Samaria was never established until after the fall of the northern kingdom of Israel. The Samari could have never existed at the time of Moses. There are 700 years difference. But the author of the Quran didn't know that. He only knew of the conflicts and the hatred between the Samaritans and the Jews and drew his logic from there. How can the Australian come before Australia was founded? Or how could Al-Bukhari have been before the city of Bukhara was founded? Or as Samari before the city of Samaria has been built? This is a massive historical error in the Quran. But it is not the only historical error, as it seems that the Quran often confused people and origin of people as it continued to copy stories from the Jewish traditions of its time. Another good example for these types of errors would be the character named Mary or Maryam in Arabic, the only woman mentioned in the Quran. Let me tell you how the Quran's author got two Marys confused. In the Torah and in the Jewish traditions, there is a highly revered prophetess named Maryam. She is mentioned in the book of Exodus and referred to multiple times in the Talmud and is considered one of the major female prophets of Israel. 
She is Maryam, sister of Aaron and Moses, and the daughter of Amram. Yes, Maryam bint Amram or Imram is Maryam, sister of Aaron and Moses. She lived some 1400 years before Jesus and she's pretty big deal in Jewish traditions. She is a key figure in God's plan for his people. Similarly, in Christian theology, Mary, mother of Jesus, also Maryam in Arabic, is a key figure in God's plan for his people. She is considered a saint and the most pure among all women. Maryam, mother of Jesus, is also a very big deal in Christian traditions. Perhaps this is why the Quran's author confused the two Maryams, being the most respected women, one for the Jews and another for the Christians. But the second Maryam, Mary, mother of Jesus, lived some 1400 years after the first Maryam, sister of Aaron and bint Amram. The result is, well, the Quran confuses the two and calls Maryam, mother of Jesus, calls her the daughter of Imran and sister of Aaron. Now that error was immediately identified and recognized by the Christians living at the time of the Prophet. And the Prophet was confronted by such an error. According to Hadith Sahih Muslim 2135, it says, When I came to Najran, the Christians of Najran, they asked me, You read, O sister of Harun, in the Quran, whereas Moses was born much before Jesus. So when I came back to Allah's Messenger, I asked him about that, whereupon he said, The people of the old age used to give names to their sons and daughters after the names of apostles and pious persons who had gone before them. Of course, the Prophet cannot admit the error. That would simply reveal that he is not receiving angelic revelations and that he indeed confused the two Maryams. So he came up with an idea on the spot that all people were given names after prophets and revered figures of their time. And that excuse is still repeated until today by many Muslim apologists. The problem is not only that the Prophet called Maryam mother of Jesus as Maryam sister of Aaron, but he also confirmed that she was Maryam daughter of Imran. Now that is pushing it too far. This is not a simple admiration of a revered figure. This is a confused identity of someone referred to as sister of such and such and at the same time the daughter of such and such only to appear to be someone else. The Prophet could not simply recover from that and the Christians of Najran knew it. Perhaps this is why they never converted to Islam. And finally, let me give you one last example or error before I wrap up this video. Surat Al-Qasas or Surah number 28 verse number 38 talks about the Pharaoh at the time of Moses. It says, And Pharaoh declared, O chiefs, I know of no other God for you but myself. So bake me bricks of clay for me, O Haman, and build a high tower so I may look at the God of Moses, although I am sure he is alive. The first observation in this verse is that the author clearly did not know what he's talking about. The author of this verse believed that the ancient Egyptians simply built giant towers and high rises made out of baked clay. Well, if only he knew that they built using gigantic stones and that one stone in the Great Pyramids weighs about five tons, he wouldn't have mentioned baked bricks. ABC of engineering, you cannot build high rises and towers using baked bricks. They would crumble to dust. And the ancient Egyptians and their genius architects knew that, but not the author of the Quran. Clearly, he was not God or Allah. He then claims that Haman was the assistant of the evil Pharaoh. Once again, confusing identities, borrowing the evil Haman from a different Jewish story that belongs to the book of Esther and making him a villain in the story of Moses and the Pharaoh. According to the detailed and precise records of Egyptian history, there was never ever a minister of Egypt named Haman. The etymology of that name is actually Persian or Mesopotamian, not Egyptian at all. Which, by the way, matches the Jewish traditions of the biblical evil Haman from the book of Esther, 
not the Quranic anachronism. Moreover, regardless of the Jewish traditions and the biblical records, which you may not believe in if you are Muslim, but according to the Greek historians, Haman the evil minister lived and ruled in Persia, not in Egypt, between 486 and 465 BC. Yet Moses and the Pharaoh of Moses were some 1400 years BC. Once again, the Quran continues to confuse public figures, dates, identities, and geographies. These errors are clear evidence that the Quran is a piece of ancient literature, written by human hands, full of mistakes and cannot be from God. If you appreciate my work and want me to produce more videos like this, please consider supporting my channel on Patreon to stop dogma and promote reason. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.